gotta be against the law to look this damn good. Cause baby, I feel real good and I wish I would. Watch out now. It's gotta be against the law. To look Wake up! Yep, it's that time again. Vape AM brought to you by VaporsOne.com. I'm your host, Anthony Ramella. All right, guys, another day, hump day here, trying to get through the week, you know, trying to finish things up here, always working towards the weekend as we are. Um, things are busy around here, as I'm sure they are for you, but I've got some stuff today, and it just never seems to stop coming. It's just crazy. Like, I don't even really have to try that much anymore to find just a crazy news article about vaping to share with you guys. I do have to do some digging to find them, but when I do, it's just like, <sighs> I can't believe the information, so... We'll get things started off like we normally do. Let's do a little bit of history. Uh, just an interesting one for today, nothing really uh, big, but uh, in 1974, the Universal Product Code, or the UPCs that you see on products everywhere today, uh, is scanned for the first time to sell a pack of Wrigley's Chewing Gum at the Marsh Supermarket in Troy, Ohio. Now, I'm actually from uh, Indiana originally, and we have Marsh Supermarkets all over the place there that have now closed up. They're completely out of business. Um, they've turned into something else at this point in time, but actually one of my first jobs was working for a Marsh supermarket doing third shift cashier work so that's been that's been probably 20 years ago but uh, it's definitely one of those things that I still remember so uh, it's just unbelievable to me how short a period of time that the UPC codes I mean what would we do without them now I know a lot of vape products don't have UPC codes and I wish they would uh, it would make our inventory a whole lot easier to take care of um, but it's just neat to see something that hasn't really been around long that's just become a normal part of our society so just thought that was a little interesting piece of history for today all right, let's go on to some birthdays. There were a few interesting ones today. Um, in no particular order here, but uh, Michael Vick's birthday is today. So happy birthday, Michael Vick. Um, it, to be honest, I loved watching him play football. When he was with the Falcons, I mean, it, it was just, it was so entertaining to never know what he was going to do behind the line. And yeah, he ran into some issues with things like some people do, uh, but that really doesn't take away from the things that he did on the field. And he was just a phenomenal football player. So happy birthday, Michael Vick. Um, something my EP will be happy about, it's uh, Nick Offerman's birthday today. So uh, he's really uh, somebody that we uh, really think is hilarious. Uh, we enjoy his comedy quite a bit. So happy birthday, Nick. I hope you're having a fantastic day. He's 48 years old. I, I actually I thought he was a little older than that. So uh, happy birthday to you, Nick. Uh, long and prosperous life to you because you still got a lot of time left. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, Chris O'Donnell's birthday today. Uh, and the only reason I bring this up is... Uh, for those of you that may not know who he is, he was in the worst Batman movie in history. <laughs> uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger played uh, the, the the ice villain in that. Uh, you know, kicks some ice, uh, and I, you know, it's got the the bat suit with the nipples on it and everything. So it's just really funny. Chris O'Donnell is actually a really good actor. He's played a lot of different parts, but unfortunately, that's the one everybody's going to remember is him playing Robin in that because it was absolutely so bad. So, you know, happy birthday, Chris. I hope you're having a great life. But every time I think of you, buddy. I'm Unfortunately, I just think of that movie. So anyway, just a little fun stuff for me. All right, well, let's get on to some wake and vape news. Let's see, where do we start today? Uh, let's start with uh, something out of my own state here. So in Ohio, um, and believe it or not, I had to dig for this. Uh, I actually was reading something else and this came up. And so I did some research into this and actually found a video of where this came onto the finance committee. So uh, this is a... I guess we would call it a bill or it's an amendment to the budget. It's called HB 11. And basically what this is, it has to regards to um, pregnancy and tobacco secession tools. Now, why I find this interesting, and literally I had to really search for this. Now, the, the funny thing is the Finance Committee is meeting and they're hearing, you know, uh, basically people talk about these different HB things that are on here. And uh, one of the guys that was actually sitting next to the chairman got wished a happy birthday because he had turned 21 years old that day. <sighs> okay, if you're not old enough to know that whether you want to vape or not, how can you be old enough to be passing laws and being part of that process? Like, how is that even possible? Like, how can you even think that those people have the, the mental fortitude to pass laws, but don't have the mental fortitude to decide whether vaping is an, an alternative that they want to go to. These kind of things boggle my mind. Um, so getting on to what HB 11 is. HB 11 is uh, dealing with secession smoking tools when it comes to pregnant women. And what they're, what they're hoping to achieve, and I think this is going to pass, is that Medicare 
will pay for smoking secession tools for pregnant women, but the caveat was only smoking secession tools that were approved by the FDA. So does that mean the IQOS is actually gonna be paid for by Medicare for pregnant women? This makes me just nauseous. Uh, we all know that vaping is a much healthier alternative to any of these other secession tools and also a lot uh, more productive as far as people actually being able to quit. I mean, I've seen studies as much as three times as much that people stop with vaping. And the great thing about vaping is if you're pregnant, you could actually go down to a zero nicotine and still have that hand to mouth action, which is probably the one thing that would keep you, you know, lively. And the weird thing about pregnant women is their flavors change throughout time. That's why they have these weird cravings. This would allow them to have access to different flavors and maybe curve some of those cravings and maybe even make their life a little bit better while they're carrying a child. But no, it's only ones that are covered under the FDA ruling. And I think this is just a horrible idea. Um, I, I, I think it's a great idea if they'd allow us to use vaping, but with the way it's set up right now, is just absolutely horrible. I bet none of you out there have even heard of HB 11. And that's the sad truth. Um, I do a lot of times go through research to find these things for you guys because I know you're probably not going to hear about them anywhere else and it's stuff that I think you should be aware of. There will be some links down in the description so you can actually watch the video of this and I would encourage you to because it, 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 it almost turns my stomach to see that these kind of things go through when there's such a better alternative for pregnant women as far as quitting smoking. So, all right, so let's go on to something else. Um, what's my favorite place to beat on in the whole United States? Well, guess what? They're back in the news again. San Francisco. Oh my God, San Francisco. San Francisco has taken it to the final uh, resting place when it comes to e-cigarettes. San Francisco is the first major U.S. city to ban e-cigarettes. They're done. They're completely done. No more e-cigarettes. Cigarettes, not touched. E-cigarettes, completely banned. Now, those of you that know uh, a little bit know that Juul's headquarters are in San Francisco. I don't know how this is gonna affect that situation. I don't know how you can actually manufacture a product that you can't sell in the city that you're in. I mean, I, I, I just don't know how that works. Uh, you know, if you were in a dry county, can you manufacture alcohol? Like, I don't know if that's something that is something you can do. Maybe it is. I mean, maybe they'll just be able to continue to stay there. Um, I don't know why they would. I, I, I think morally for myself, if that was the case for the city I was and didn't want the product that I was putting out, I'd leave. You know, I, I really would. I'd go somewhere else where they, you know, accepted me with open arms and probably would give me a lot more benefits because they want to see me around. So San Francisco, I don't know what you're doing. And even LA is talking crap about San Francisco, you know, literally and figuratively because they are just passing things that are just craziness. It's like you just want all of your citizens to go back to smoking so that you can get more MSA money. I swear to God that's what this is all about. But, um, you know, everything else they do is healthy, healthy, healthy. And then passing all of this recreational marijuana stuff and saying that this is bad. I'm not saying marijuana is bad, but I'm saying, guys, I mean, what side of the coin are you on? It's just like every day seems like something else. So one minute you're taking money from Jewel and the next minute you're telling everybody that e-cigarettes are now totally banned. All right, I wish that was the only one. I've got one last thing for you guys here. Uh, a smaller place in California called Livermore uh, bans flavored tobacco sales uh, and enacts a school buffer zone for retailers. What the title doesn't tell you is they also banned e-cigarettes in that area as well. So this is something that we're probably gonna see kind of move slowly across California, which means it's gonna move across, across Washington and then across Oregon and it'll kind of start making its way. And guys, I brought this up in other episodes. With this Tobacco 21 federal thing that McConnell's trying to get through, if that passes, all states will have to ratify their tobacco laws. It's, it's under the Snyder Act. So this is something they could just add into that Tobacco 21 thing to ban e-cigarettes as well. And if this becomes the case, we're not going to have a leg to stand on. I, I want to come to you guys every day and do these news things because I think you need this information. The problem is, guys, I'm not seeing this, the, the views. I'm not seeing the subscribers. I'm not seeing people that are sharing this information. And I don't know how much longer I can afford to continue to do these. You know, I, I think that what we're probably gonna end up doing is a lot more funny videos, just because I know those are the things that get views. And if you guys don't want this news, I understand. I mean, if you just wanna stick your head in the sand and hope that things are gonna change, then that's fine. I mean, that's what you wanna do, I'm on board with that. I won't keep bothering you every day with this. But if I don't start seeing like at least 100, 150 views on these videos, it's just not worth my time. I know this information, you know, and I, I don't wanna be mean about that, but I, I really love 
my 40 or 50 people that are constantly seeing me every day that are doing this and I feel bad for you guys. I mean, maybe I'll set up something on my Instagram where I can you know, contact and let you guys know what's going on on a regular basis if you really wanna know. But I, I can't continue this. I have other work to do. I mean, we have a we have a you know a small company, but it's a lot of work for a couple of people. So I just want to let you guys know that um, I'm going to continue to do these probably for another week or so. But if I don't start seeing some upticks in views, I have to spend my time a little bit more wisely. All right. I love you guys. You know, here at Vape AM, our biggest goal is to get you to stop smoking or you're going to die. So jump on over to the website, vapers1.com. Get a shirt, get a hoodie for the I Vape, I Vote thing. Uh, we want to stand together. We are going to be at NVE. We We'll have those shirts available there. We've just lowered a bunch of prices on the website. So take a minute, get over there. You know, I, there, there are 100 mil bottles, a lot of them for under 15 bucks. And these are national brand things. So get over there and take a look. If you haven't been over there in a while, if you have and you thought the prices were too high, we recognize that fact and we lowered some things. So enough shameless plugs. I love you guys. Stop smoking, you're gonna die. And I'm gonna see you tomorrow. <laughs>